What do we think of the hiring now that we've got that context? What do you make of these explanations? Do they sit well with you? Still very underwhelming. I mean, it sounds... Do you understand the hiring any better today? No. Okay. No, absolutely not. So the explanations not. don't add up for you then still? No, no, and especially because of how you started. You didn't need sportsology. Maybe you needed sportsology to hire Matt Crocker. And maybe you needed sportsology to hire Gucci and Wei Yu, who I don't know why. You've already interviewed him twice. You know Gucci. Yeah, and I, yeah. You, I know Gucci. You know Gucci. Yeah. They've interviewed him before, yeah. before sportsology was there. But it seems like a lot of time wasted and resources wasted. Mm. And quite frankly, even more confusion. Like, why isn't, let's for a second get past that it's Greg Berhalter. Why isn't the coach coaching in a summer tournament? What are you paid to do? I, I, I was shocked. I, I really was, I literally, my jaw hit the floor in the press conference when he said, big ticket items. I mean, that is to say that there are, you know, more important things for the national team manager to do than coach the national team. And actually what I think we heard there is we don't want to throw Greg into a position to kind of take Perfect. more pressure. I agree. The do coach you, you comes agree? in. Hold on. Because I said this, right? Maybe they're not announcing the coach and they're doing the interim mm -hmm. to the interim because they don't want the new coach to come in and be in a, under immediate pressure. Right? I said that. Yeah. Do you remember that? I said that two, three weeks ago. Fine. I understand that. Why announce it after the semifinal? Why not just wait until after Gold Cup? And well, then you, you announce Greg Berhalter, if that's no. the plan. Why do it now? Why well, is the timing today? No, you have, you have, you have to understand that the t they didn't want this to come out now. This was not their decision to- Somebody to broke the news. It's not news being broken until Greg Berhalter confirms it or US Soccer confirms it. It's just the athletics saying it. Mm. It's very simple. Why do it now? And once you did it, why wait on it then? Why wait? Uh, do we have a Christian Pulisic quote here, I believe? Yeah, let's get to uh, Christian Pulisic's quote about uh, the rehiring of Greg Berhalter. This is, of course, from last night after the 3-0 win. Today is a testament of the work that Berhalter put into this team. If that's not enough evidence, then that's all right. People are going to hate no matter what. They're going to hate no matter what, Her. What do you make of what Pulisic's saying there? We asked Jeff Carlisle, and I guess Matt Crocker was asked this as well. The player uh, input was key, mm -hmm. a key factor into Greg Berhalter being hired. I hear this all the time. Well, I'm sure if you ask Ricardo Pepe, I'm sure if you ask Joe Reyna, I'm sure if you ask Joe Scally or John Anthony Brooks about Greg Berhalter, mm -hmm. maybe the reaction is different. Yeah, maybe you're right. Guess what? Neither of them is Christian Pulisic. Neither of them was Tim Ream. Neither of them was uh, some of these important players here. I think player input, I'm sorry, I got to cut you off. I think player input can be dangerous it's because fine. A, cause a guy who is saying But it carries so weight. But, it, but can, you, can you acknowledge that? Yes, if it's yes. genuine input. What I think you have when, when we know that the manager is still a candidate, and that was made publicly clear by yeah. U.S. Soccer, and then you ask a player publicly what they think of bringing a, a potential candidate back, you, you're, in, you're in between a rock and a hard place. You can't really be honest. So if that's the input, if it's not private, if it's public statements from players, you got to take that and, with a and, big grain and of salt. Al and also, and from some it's in an individual, it's in an individual right. choice. Because these players, some of these players, like Christian Pulisic, who's a very good player, right, and is a very important player on the U.S. Men's National Team, who's the one coach over the years that's given him that confidence? Yeah, Berhalter. It's Berhalter. It wasn't Frank Lampard. It wasn't Thomas Tuchel. It wasn't anybody else uh, at Chelsea. It was Greg Berhalter. So why wouldn't he want Greg Berhalter back? Does it mean it's the best thing for the program? No. But I understand why Christian Pulisic and some of these players said that. I was really interested in this, you know, press conference to get answers, right? I want to kind of timeline answers. When did you start talking to people? The, the most telling things to me about this um, was how much U.S. soccer, not just in the press conference, but in all the material that they're putting out, are trying to tell us how thorough this process was. And whenever somebody goes out of their way to tell you how thorough something was, it right, almost, look how much of a good job I did. It feels like me, you're protesting a little too much. Like, why are you going so far out of your way? And then we heard the, the story from Greg Berhalter where he says, I had kind of my final interviews. And before I'd gotten out of town, Matt Crocker called me and told me I had the job. I also learned that Greg Berhalter was the last interview. So he must have knocked the socks off Crocker there, but Crocker didn't keep going and didn't keep talking to people uh, after Berhalter. He straight up offers them the job. So we hear thorough process, thorough process, but the dates, they don't seem to add up. They don't seem to add up to a thorough process. So that's what was disappointing to me about today. There was an opportunity to explain that away. We don't really get concrete answers. And as far as the budget is concerned, I don't think we really got like concrete answers there. You can't say 
from what literally on the same podium, Matt Crocker can't say, you know, I, all the double digit coaches was to me is saying all the big name coaches, the guys who aren't known for working with younger players who don't have that that connection to the American game. All those guys are off the table. Meanwhile, just on the podium, JT Batson saying no, there was no limit to what we could do. Right. Here. Either you had blind ambition and you swung for the fences or you played it safe. And I, well, I was hearing both. I was hearing both those answers out of the same mouth. And that was that was to me frustrating um, in terms of what what was supposed to be a, a clarification today from U.S. soccer. I, I think they just left us with more in, questions. in a day after a lot of misinformation, right? There's a lot of misinformation right. about one can and cannot spend compared. Right, let's just address that uh, yes. just directly. You know, we heard from Charlie Davies on CBS that the men's national team hiring budget is directly connected to the women's national team hiring budget. I did uh, talk to some people at the Federation today. I, I could not get that linked that directly. Overall, are there budget issues at U.S. soccer that definitely limit, like, can't just stroke a $25 million. Correct. Can't just go to PEP, right? Correct. That would be very difficult. But admit that then. Say that. Don't right. tell me that there's this limitless budget and that the board was okay with spending everything. You know, tell us that 2026 is big, but we can't go broke chasing it. Listen, this is one of the major concerns with fans and a lot of pundits is, is the lack of transparency because they could say hey this was a rigorous process and they could write down they could do the, like their little powerpoints that they love doing the they could show us, yes the <laughs> ll readings the the double digits all, that doesn't mean anything no. what did you have to spend who were the candidates uh, what did you ask we go from there none of that's being introduced to us none of that's being presented so it leaves everybody just wondering more and then when you have this misinformation JT Batson, I'm, I'm talking mm -hmm. about that misinformation. CEO. Where, yeah, where he's saying, the CEO is saying, unlimited amount. Oh, it didn't matter. That, that wasn't the issue right. here. But then you're hearing that they went with a guy who made, what, $1.6 million last year? Mm -hmm. Was probably on the lower Very end. Very accessible. Yes. Very accessible. Um, it, it should be noted, we are hearing reports of voices of dissent within U.S. soccer. I believe Steve Goff of the Washington Post was first to report that there was at least one member yeah. of the board that was not on board with right. this. It wasn't that, unanimous. Right, it was not unanimous. What does that tell you? Well, uh, it tells you that it's, there's a voting process and somebody mm -hmm. obviously uh, didn't see eye to eye with having bringing Greg Berhalter back, which is fair. I've got my own set of questions. I, I'm very curious if they even asked some of the sponsors uh, from a PC point of sure, view. Sure, right. You know, well, the domestic violence. Yes. Right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I think that was something that came up in the press conference. I, my thought is, has been always on this. So Cindy Parlo Cohn said the word allegations are taken right. very seriously. It has to be made very clear. This was not an allegation of domestic violence. This was an admission of domestic violence right. by Greg Berhalter. And the investigation, I was told, confirmed that, right? At that point, it would have been very easy, and I think it would have been the correct decision from an organizational standpoint to say, you know what? Whether we think this person can be rehabilitated or not, whether we think Greg Berhalter is good or bad, we have somebody who is admitted to domestic violence, and that is a disqualifier from being any position in this organization, but specifically the men's national team coach. They didn't do that. And now they have created a precedent where they say there are some acts of domestic violence where you can still work at U.S. soccer. And when you talk about sponsors, women working at the Federation, all those people, you are eventually going to have to answer to those, those people yeah. because we all know what happened. It's public. It's a fact. And U.S. soccer still said we want this guy. It's not that they necessarily disregarded it entirely, but they have overlooked it. They have moved past it to bring back Greg Berhalter. And that, that says a lot about U.S. soccer. And I would say, uh, as somebody who's followed the organization for a long time, I think that's a disappointing conclusion. And Very we'll disappointing. And we'll see what happens because sponsors are key, right? They're the ones yeah. who sign the checks. They're the ones who keep this going. So we'll see exactly how they navigate those fields, but, I, but I'm with you there. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.